Shocking secrets revealed, Adam's desperate plea to Nick, Nikki's mystery caller unveiled. Victor's race to save her unravels. Amidst unexpected confessions and covert rendezvous, the young and the restless, characters face gripping dilemmas. From Adam's heartfelt concerns for Connor to Nikki's erratic behavior in a dive bar, tensions run high. Meanwhile, Jack struggles to aid Nikki without enabling her, while Victor races against time to uncover her whereabouts. Plus, a surprise visit from Lola Rosales sparks speculation of rekindled romance, leaving Kyle and Summer's future hanging in the balance. Brace yourself for jaw-dropping twists and romantic entanglements. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, I hope everyone is having a wonderful day, after watching these videos, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Adam leans on Nick, and Victor and drunk Nikki have a close shave. The young and the restless today Adam confides in Nick, Jack asks Lauren for a big favor, and Abby approaches Tessa. Tessa enters society as Devin and Abby are sharing a kiss. Abby informs her she's on time and expresses gratitude for making the time to speak with her. Before departing, Devin inquires about the baby's hearing aids. Tessa informs Abby that she finds her invitation intriguing. She was taken aback that she preferred to meet with her alone rather than Mariah. When Abby questions her about her modeling, she discovers that it's not a full-time job. She says, I have a proposition for you, to Tessa. When Lauren enters Jack's office at Jabot and notes that he wanted to talk, they strike up a conversation on business matters. Jack says he needs to ask her for a favor. He informs her that Nikki is at Newman Media by herself and is completely lost. She needs someone who is not easily snowed and who is familiar with the cast of people. It's only going to last till she gets back on her feet. Would you consider giving Fenmore's a temporary run by your staff while you take over to assist Nikki? Because she doesn't think she's the right person for this, Lauren debates with Jack. If Nikki weren't so determined that Victor be unaware that he is her sponsor, Jack would handle it himself. He would never permit him to go near a Newman division. Victor would probably agree if Lauren says so. Though Lauren needs to know how Nikki is feeling, she decides she could fill in for a while. Will she think she's just being watched to make sure she doesn't drink alcohol? Victor tells Nick and Victoria at Newman that he has heard from people who say Jordan is dead. They find out that six people are missing, which indicates that they either fled during the commotion or haven't located their remains. Victoria wonders if Nikki is aware that Jordan might be among the latter. Victor claims that when she happened upon the news, she became alarmed. Nick is concerned that Jordan might be traveling to Genoa City right now. I will know where she is every minute of the day, declares Victor, promising to protect their mother to the best of his abilities. Nikki hears her desk phone ring in her office. She responds and waves frequently, but nobody says anything. Nikki exclaims, oh thank God, as she glances at her phone. Not a ghost in sight. Her desk phone rings once more. Nikki snatches it up, slams it down, and cries out, leave me alone, into the receiver. Nikki then collects her jacket and purse and leaves the house. Victor receives a call in his workplace telling him that Nikki just left in a ride-sharing. He gives the individual the instruction to stealthily follow her. He's curious to know her final destination. Victoria gives Cole an update regarding Jordan at Crimson Lights. According to him, Claire is still unaware of the fire and is unaware that Jordan might still be outside. Victoria can tell he feels she ought to know. Cole asserts that she is more powerful and that they ought to honor her right to know the truth. She has a right to know if her aunt might be dead or missing. Victoria acknowledges that she must be informed. Cole believes that both of them should tell her. Lying ruins everything they have worked so hard to achieve. Victoria gives a nod. Claire must know that she can rely on them. 
Cole swears, not as long as there's breath in my body, that the mother will never again harm their daughter. Wearing sunglasses, Nikki walks inside a packed dive bar and finds an empty corner booth, where she gestures for service. Victor receives a call at his office regarding Nikki entering a pub, and he responds that he is on his way. When Nick and Adam later meet in the workplace, Nick observes that Adam has been preoccupied. Nick suggests they have a conversation about it, but Adam dismisses his worries. Adam gives in, saying, All right. Don't claim I didn't alert you. When Victoria and Cole knock on Claire's door, she answers, grinning and writing in her journal. Nice to see you again. Cole queries the progress. Claire reports that things have improved slightly after working through a few issues in group this morning. The young lady recognizes that this isn't the usual visit. Victoria offers for her to take a seat. Cole informs her that several prisoners perished in the fire, while several remain unaccounted for. Victoria explains, it's possible that they got away. Cole believes that they ought to be ready for anything. Claire inquires as to whether they've thought of Jordan maybe starting the fire. She had once informed her that fire may be the best distraction during an emergency. Claire receives assurances from Victoria that she will never again approach Jordan, even if he is behind the fire. Cole promises to protect her. Claire senses that they are attempting to protect her and are beginning to show true concern. Victoria attests to their concern, and Cole asserts that it is his duty as her father to ensure her safety. Claire admits that while she thinks of Jordan, she is primarily filled with hate rather than fear. She queries Nikki's reaction to the news. Jack informs Lauren in his office that Nikki needs a buddy she can genuinely trust and a right hand. Lauren speculates that it might be a fresh challenge that is merely momentary. All right. I'm on board. Thank you, Jack decides to give Nikki a ring and schedule a meeting. Asking the waiter if he has seen a woman who fits Nikki's description, Victor walks into the dingy bar. Has she been drinking, and have you seen her? According to the waiter, customers appreciate their privacy. Peeling off banknotes, Victor tries to see whether it helps. Nikki comes out of the bathroom behind him and recognizes him. Drunk, she ducks into a dark corner and texts Jack, telling him to call Vitor.loot him a little bit to meet. Please, ASSP. Abby informs Tessa at Society that she will be joining the Chancellor Winter's board. As good as in, I say. She needs someone to act as her day manager because she wants to be as involved as possible there. May I ask if you would be interested? Tessa murmurs that she hasn't managed to do much. She consents to consider it and speak with Mariah about it. The fact that Abby wishes to return to the office surprises her. Society runs like a well-oiled machine, and Abby has been restless lately. Tessa consents to respond to her by tomorrow. Adam tells Nick in the club bar about Connor's decision to attend an out-of-state university. He's happier, yet he's having trouble at school. There appears to be a difference in learning. Is it serious, Nick queries. Adam says it's sufficiently serious. That breaks Nick's heart, and he asks what he thinks should be done. Adam acknowledges that at first he was upset, but Chelsea and Sally helped him to relax. They're good at that, Nick grinned. I'm delighted he paid attention. There are moments when there's nothing more you can do than hop in the car and head somewhere where you can let out all your frustrations without making things worse. Adam believes that feeling ashamed of who he is might lead to a specific form of loneliness, which is one of the reasons he overreacted. It was how he felt, and he didn't want it for Connor. But it appears that his son is happier than he has ever been with himself. Adam informs Nick that it matters a lot that he's been trying. Nick also values Adam's efforts that have been put forward. They discuss how children put them through a lot. Although Nick claims it's difficult to see children fail, it's the only way they can grow. 
they are amazed at how well Faith, Summer, and Noah have all fared. Adam believes that Nick is what unites them all, saying, you must have done something right. That is, in Nick's opinion, the most genuine compliment he has ever received. Adam is putting aside his ego and approaching Nick for guidance. He could use some brotherly counsel since he is so worried about Connor that it hurts. Nick counsels him to stick with it, maintain composure, and have faith in the experts. Having said that, he ought to conduct independent research and consult Sharon. He can then make a big deal out of it if he discovers the school isn't treating it appropriately. Tell me how it turns out. I will, Adam nods. Jack tells Lauren at Jabot that he is so grateful to her. She remembers that he became Nikki's sponsor after intervening at her request. Jack groans, oh, boy, as he receives Nikki's text at that moment. He displays the text to Lauren. She understands from the gibberish that Nikki wants him to entice Victor to a meeting site. Nikki is formally intoxicated, according to Jack, who then begs him to save her. It's more like to enable her, explains Lauren. How will you proceed? Jack claims she hasn't given him much of an option. Claire asks Nikki in her room if she's been able to fend off the affects of the wine Jordan gave her. Like she says, it's been difficult. Claire claims she feels depressed and furious over what Jordan did to her. Cole realizes that she is blaming only Jordan for the first time. It's an additional wise move. Claire reports that she has been putting a lot of effort into helping the therapist comprehend what transpired with the woman who took advantage of her, didn't even pretend to love her, and used her. She's doing well, according to the doctors, but it will take time. Cole has all confidence in her. It appears our daughter is beginning to heal on all fronts, reflects Victoria. After giving Abby a hug at society, Tessa departs while Devin reappears. The fact that Tessa is interested in managing her days makes him happy. He is eager for Abby to come to Chancellor Winters with them. Abby aspires to leave her mark on Dom's legacy and demonstrate her abilities. She also desires greater access to Devon's world. They share a kiss. Victor is informed by the server in the dive bar that the woman he described was present, but it's unclear what kind of drink she was having. Jack calls Victor's phone, requesting to talk about Nikki. Victor consents to meet with him in 15 minutes at his office. Nikki sighs in the corner as Victor walks out. The next update for today. Is Lola Rosales's unexpected visitation encouraging Kyle and Summer to get back together? According to teasers for The Young and the Restless, Summer Newman is excited to see what she can do with Chance Chancellor in the future, but Kyle Abbott is probably her real love. We don't think that Kyle and Summer's divorce is official, even though they recently signed it. Although there have been setbacks for Summer and Kyle along the way, they have always been able to get past them eventually. Not that Audra Charles and Kyle were ever very serious in the first place, but they have already broken up. For Summer, Audra was merely another person to divert his mind from the hurt and rage Kyle was feeling, so he never really gave the new woman any thought. But if Lola Rosales, last portrayed by Sasha Kaye, came back to town and rekindled their shared romantic emotions for their ex-husband, Summer would undoubtedly take note. Once upon a time, Kyle believed he would spend the rest of his life with Lola, so her return to Genoa City would undoubtedly upend things. Lola still has a lot of friends in GC, including Tessa Porter, Mariah Copeland, and Abby Newman Abbott, even if her family is no longer in the area. Lola could still return to Genoa City for a visit, but Abby couldn't obstruct her from advancing her culinary profession in Miami. Perhaps Abby should re-evaluate her plan to grow society by opening a second restaurant and enlist Lola's assistance in a joint venture. If Lola ever makes a comeback, that would provide a nice explanation for her GC homecoming. 
Would Sasha Kaye be amenable to returning to YNR as Lola Rosales now that she's Supergirl in the DCU universe? If not, viewers are accustomed to seeing new faces in well-known characters, thus Lola might be replaced with a different actress. In any event, it would be intriguing to observe Kyle's reaction if he saw Lola again. Naturally, watching Summer's expression when she sees Kyle and Lola together would be much more fascinating. In the event that the writers are arranging a reunion between Kyle and Summer, they should consider the possibility that a healthy amount of envy would assist entice Summer to return to Kyle. Stay tuned for updates on whether any news on Lola Rosales's return to the young and the restless is possible. Spoilers for the show hint at some romantic surprises to come. Thanks for watching this videos. Please hit the subscribe button for more updated news.